Hello people, right, today I want to address a little issue that I have for 3ds Max and working with high polygon models. Now obviously it's no ZBrush, so when you're working in ranges of like 20 million polygons or vertices, you're going to have slowdowns. No matter what hardware you have these days, you can have Intel i9-11900, RTX 3090Ti, 128GB of RAM. So even if you have the best of the best hardware, you're still eventually going to have slowdowns and the only real solution is to reduce poly counts. Now I spent a bit of time researching different methods of reducing poly count natively. Most of the modifiers I found, they had accuracy issues, some of them were crashing or just hanging or freezing, some of them completely changed the shape of the original model, and some of them just feel buggy. And I didn't find anything good until 3ds Max 2023, so I decided to do a lot of tests with different modifiers to see what the best solution is. And for reference, I have this 3D printing model, now this is for mounting monitors onto the wall, and this model consists of 20,223,184 polygons which is 20,223,156 vertices. So let's start with Quantify Mesh. So I applied this to the model, wait 33 minutes, I had no progress bar, no response, 3ds Max froze, pressed escape many times to try and cancel the operation, it didn't cancel it, so I had to shut down the program manually via Task Manager. Retopology, so I applied this to the model. Keep in mind, Retopology has a rollout to select different Retopology methods like Reform, Quadruflow. So I tried Retopology under the Reform rollout with its default settings set to 5,000 polygons. It took 1,109 seconds, which is quite annoying because that's what a status bar says. Now, although that's good having a status bar, but telling you in seconds, 1,109. Like, what the hell is that? That just doesn't clock in your head. But the shape is completely different, all the edges are rounded off, so it's not usable. Then it has another rollout, this time I tried Quadrifloat. Again with its default settings, waited around 40 minutes, 3ds Max just froze. Press escape like 20 times to try to cancel the operation, but no response. So again, I had to close it via Task Manager. Now moving on to the optimizer modifier. To change its intensity of how many polygons you want to reduce, we have the face threshold parameter. By default it's 4.0, the higher the number the more polygons it reduces. Now it is very quick at reducing polygons on the default settings, but if you change the face threshold from 4.0 to something like 0.01, it'll take a long time and it'll probably freeze. Actually the lower the number, the less polygons it's going to reduce too, so you want to increase the number if you want to reduce more polygons. It does require a recalculation every time you change the face threshold value, but it only takes a minute or less. So at the default settings at 4.0 face threshold, I went from 20,223,184 polygons to 147,772 polygons, which is 20,223,156 vertices to 114,043 vertices. I'm not going to be repeating all these numbers myself anymore, I'm just going to put them up on the screen because it actually takes quite a long time for me to say them. Change from the default setting at 4.0 to 10 face threshold and again it took only less than a minute and as you can see it halved our previous values of polygons and this time I tried going down from 4.0 to 1.0 face threshold and as you can see it almost doubled our results from the first time when we were using 4.0 default settings just for the fun of it, I try 0.1 face threshold. And I also try 0.01 face threshold with the program crashing, freezing, and the only way to cancel the operation was by force shutting the program down with the task manager. Overall, Optimizer is not usable to me because if we add an edit poly modifier and remove all the smoothing, the object looks nothing like the original model. It doesn't have a progress bar anywhere. At the default settings, 4.0, and even at low reduction count, like 1.0, it still looks nothing like the original model. It does have a before and after vertex and polygon count. However, it does get cut off in the user interface, so you can't even see it anyway. All right, let's move on to Pro Optimizer. This is pretty good. It took me around 20 minutes to calculate our object. You click on the modifier, then a scroll out, optimization level, and click on calculate. And under that button, you will also see its progress. We have object, is currently being optimized, so the initial calculation does take pretty long, but once it does, you can actually change the vertical percentage, change it to 0.1%. Added an edit poly modifier and remove smoothing. Now actually this object looks really good. And we went from this to this poly and vertical count. 
so obviously it's much better than the previous modifiers. A great thing is, once you do let that initial calculation take place, after that you can just change the percentage values and it will only take a minute or so to update. And it doesn't require an in-depth recalculation every time you want to change the reduction. Now it does have a progress bar, but it seems to jump in tens, like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50%. And it does feel to get stuck, like it was stuck on 90% for like 4 minutes, which can lead to making you think like it's frozen or something. And I think that's one of the reasons why I had so many crashes before, because you just don't know, it's like sometimes you could be waiting half an hour and you think it's frozen but it's actually still calculating and this modifier does have a before and after vertex and polygon count now let's move on to polygon cruncher just for transparency i did reach out to the guys at moon tools to see if they would like a sponsored video in return for a perpetual license and they agreed which i'm very happy about because i love this modifier it actually works really really well but to be non-biased i wanted to include all the other modifiers that i have available in 3ds max so let's get right into it so you add the modifier click on calculate it does an in-depth calculation which does take quite long initially similar to what Pro Optimizer took, around 20 minutes. This one has a much better status bar and indicator. It says computing optimization. However, this can be stuck for a few minutes. For this specific object, it was stuck for around two minutes and then it displayed zero objects optimized, zero elements have been removed. And once that minute or two passes, then the status bar should update every second or so. And once it finishes its calculation, only then you would enter your percentage. Just like Pro Optimizer, I use 0.1% and with the same mathematics, it got the exact same polygon count. And again, we add the edit poly modifier, remove all the smoothing groups and it looks very very similar to Pro Optimizer. Now at face value, the only real benefit I'm seeing at the moment is the status bar. But if we dig a little deeper and find this feature called Magic Cruncher, it actually turns out it's a huge improvement over Pro Optimizer. This lets you get really low poly counts that you wouldn't be able to achieve if you put in values at 0.001%. But it is extremely punishing time-wise. And to be honest, I think this could be fixed if this modifier has a little checkbox to disable or to update. Basically, the process works like this. You apply Polygon Cruncher modifier, press calculate, which takes around 20 minutes. Check the Magic Cruncher checkbox, which would then repeat the calculation. However, I left it for an hour and a half and in the status bar, it was still on step one. So instead, you have to initially reduce the poly count. I applied the modifier, change the percentage value to 10%, collapse the object, and I apply a second polygon cruncher, which now would just look like one polygon cruncher since we collapsed the object. Click on calculate, check magic cruncher, and as soon as you check it, press escape on the keyboard, because when you check it, it unlocks the rollout for Magic Cruncher. And once it does, you can choose different levels of crunching. You can choose high if you want high detail with higher polygon counts, or low if you want less detail with low poly counts. And only then would you recheck the Magic Cruncher checkbox. In my opinion, this really cleans up the topology in such a clean way that using the vertex percentage values or Pro Optimizer doesn't seem to achieve. This Magic Cruncher does seem to adjust the vertex percentage itself. So I don't know if all it does is find the sweet spot or if it does further processing itself. But it does reduce the polygon count to a ridiculous level whilst retaining even better detail than other methods. It would be really good if it did have a little checkbox to remove smoothing groups because I like to see what the object looks like without smoothing. And as I mentioned before, it would be really good if it had a checkbox saying don't update automatically. It would be good if you could just check everything you want, enter the values and only then would you click calculate. I think this would apply if I wanted to reduce that 20 million polygon count model using the Magic Cruncher feature straight away instead of me having to use the Polygon Cruncher once, collapsing it, then run Polygon Cruncher again and only then would I be able to use the Magic Cruncher. Now initially I was using 3ds Max 2021 when I needed an internal modifier or solution for reducing polygons. Back in that version, Pro Optimizer would often crash, not work or completely change the original shape of the object. So Polygon Cruncher was the only real solution that actually worked in the 3ds Max. Before that I was actually using a ridiculously long method for reducing polygon count. I would export the object as an STL model, import it to Prusa Slicer, right click, simplify, detail level extra high, then export it and import it back into 3ds Max. It's a bit excessive but that's what I had to do. Now both this Polygon Cruncher and the Prusa Slicer method were very similar and now in 3ds Max 2023 Pro Optimizer seems to be almost identical with the results. But this is just maps we're talking about using 0.1% on 20,223,184 we turned into 40,502 polygons. But yeah again I'm just mentioning this is just maps. 
However, if low poly count is really important, then Polygon Cruncher is the only way using the Magic Cruncher feature. It will require extra processing, but I definitely prefer this method. It just feels that like the results are much cleaner. So I will continue using the Polygon Cruncher over any other method because I'm so used to other methods crashing, hanging, giving inconsistent or inaccurate results and the progress bar and status box is a great indicator in my opinion and that way you won't be thinking, oh is it crashed or not? So yeah the Magic Cruncher is a clear winner for me. You can't get that low level polygon count with this level of accuracy with other modifiers that I mentioned before. But yeah thanks to Mootools for making this video possible, I'm really happy to actually be able to compile all these different modifiers and show you the results guys. So yeah. Thank you for watching, take care, peace.